it going guys? My name is Lucian Costa. Uh, filming a video with Jeff Saigo. Uh, I've done a few videos with him in the past. Uh, I think this is our fourth or fifth one. Uh, I've done plenty of photo shoots with him as well. Uh, let's see, today we did a little bit of a touch up muscle group day, which just kind of threw a bunch of stuff together, stuff that I didn't really get a chance to do a full session on during the week. Uh, current height, which has been the same now, it's 5'10". Uh, weight is at 222 to 24. I'm currently 13 weeks out from North Americans. Um, haven't competed uh, since last year. I did the Junior Nationals where I got fifth place in the heavyweight class. Uh, a little disappointing. Got third the year before. This year I got last year I got fifth. Uh, also did North Americans last year where it was a disappointing outcome. Uh, I got the DMP. Did not place. Which is fine. So yeah, today was just a touch up day. As opposed to the other DMP. Yes, of course. <laughs> of course, the other one. <laughs> okay, so uh, today, uh, go ahead and talk about your different movements you did, buddy, and everything, and what you like about each one. Oh, let's see. There's so many things. You did, like, a, we did, a plethora. Uh, let's see, yeah, exactly. It was, a, it was a superset type of a day. I, we start off with uh, inclined dumbbell presses, which I supersetted with uh, uh, dumbbell front raises. Uh, again, I already hit chest and shoulders this week. So it was just more of just uh, hit him again, a little touch up just between what time of time I have here in Grand Rapids. Um, did that for I think three or four sets. They didn't go too heavy, just up to 120s and then the, I believe the 50s for the dumbbell raises. After that, we went to uh, hammer strength shoulder press and superset that with a, it was a sort of a decline hammer strength uh, for chest. So we superseted that, we did I believe three sets of that. After that, we went to um, pec flies on a cable machine, and we superseted that with uh, side laterals, dumbbell side laterals, and also this, again, I don't know what you call it, it's a squeeze movement for, for the inner pec. Actually, I don't really have a name for it, to be honest with you. Uh, we did that, we did about three sets of that. Um, after that, after I got a lot of blood in the shoulders and chest, went on to do bison triceps. Uh, started off in the cable machine as well. Did a tricep press down with, uh, and then we did an overhead uh, cable curl, I guess with straight bar. Uh, did about three sets of that. Then we went on and did uh, overhead dumbbell extension for a tricep. Supersetted that with standing dumbbell curls. Uh, after that, we went to, uh, what is it? Preacher curl with a dumbbell, single, single hand preacher curl dumbbell. An incline, and then also a concentration type of curl, but where you're standing as opposed to sitting. Okay, I got you. Good deal. So, what was uh, during your last off season, bud, uh, this past year? What was your biggest emphasis on, like, what do you concentrate the most on? To be honest with you, this off season was mostly just me uh, getting back to the fun of the sport. Yeah. Uh, last year burned me out. Um, June Nationals, I prepped hard for it. I, I, again, I didn't place as well as I liked to. Um, it was my mistake. I, I kind of messed up the last day with timing of things. And then for North Americans, I, I, I really, really pushed everything. Um, and um, I don't want to say I didn't get a fair look, but it, it, it just didn't turn out in my favor. And I really pressed hard for that show, really invested a lot of time. Um, and I got, honestly, got burned out after it. After I didn't, I didn't get into call outs in the first, second, or third, I, I, it really just kind of killed me. I had a good time with my friends and family there to support me, but in the end, when I got home, I just was burned out. So the past six months have been just me kind of owning in on the joy of the sport again, turning it more into a hobby as opposed to something that's going to be a career for me, um, and trying to find the fun in it again. So it, it's been a challenge. Um, I was originally going to compete this weekend. Uh, but again, my mind was just not ready. Um, I didn't get all my ducks in a row, so I kind of pushed off for a little bit, and that's why I decided to do North America, which is, again is in 13 weeks, which mentally I'm ready for it. I just, uh, again, need to make sure I have all my ducks in a row, mm -hmm. as the saying goes. Okay. Well, and that's cool because, um, like, a lot of people never talk about it, but uh, life sometimes just gets in the way. <laughs> of like the sport and what well, you know and to be honest with you it, 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 it does but also the sport gets in the way of life mm. um, I, I invested a lot of time 
in the gym like everybody else does. Mm -hmm. And it's because I truly love the sport. And I also invest a lot of time judging shows last year, um, which again took a lot of time. And, you know, when you have a full-time job and trying to maintain a home life and actually work and train clients and everything else, it, it really can get overwhelming. But again, the love of the sport for it, it, it's what pushed me through for junior nationals and North Americans. Um, but really, in the end, I, I just really got burned out because it was such a disappointment to me. Um, I haven't placed that poorly uh, since I don't know when. And it, it wasn't because, again, like I said, it wasn't because I didn't get a fair look. It's just, it, I just, it just really hit hard. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, it really just, this past, you know, six to eight months was really me just kind of focusing on finding that um, happiness in sport, the joy, the thing that makes you go to the gym every single day, to lift weights, to improve. And, you know, I think it was good for me to take some time off, but um, I won't know that till obviously, the week of the show. Mm -hmm. In 13 weeks. Okay. So no big changes this time. <laughs> I don't want to say that. No, no, no. No big yeah, changes. Like nothing, Honestly, like the off season. No, I, I've, I've always, I've always kind of kept it basic. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. It, it yeah. really is that simple. Eat, lift. You have the genetics. You're going to grow. You don't. It's going to be a hard, hard, but steady, you know, be hard. It's going to mm -hmm. be a steady pace that, you know, they would say steady pace wins the race. Right? Yeah. Um, so it, it's, I've been focusing, like I said, more of, the psychological aspect of the sport where I find a joy, I find, you know, a balance in life. Um, so that's been my main focus off season. Um, I don't think I've lost anything uh, size wise. I just haven't actually improved enough. Um, I've made small gains here and there, but it's not what you'd expect for uh, an off season. So like I said, the next 13 weeks, you can just be just ramping up everything, training, dieting, everything, um, which I've always grown into shows anyways. So the starting point that I'm at as far as, you know, body fat level and all that stuff is, is it a good point for 13 weeks out? Um, so, yeah. Good deal. Um, so North America is then is your, going to be your next show. Are you going to do anything different with your diet leading into the show, bud, as opposed to like last year? Or? Nothing. I'm going to have my wonderful cheat day Saturday. Yeah. Where anything goes, except for fried food usually. Anything fried else. Fried food. Start with breakfast at Rixie's, yum, yum and go on to whatever else I want to eat. Usually I, I have my Saturdays as my cheat day just because it's I judge shows on, on Saturdays, so it's just very convenient, and I will admit I am the lazy man when it comes to packing food. Mm -hmm. I have to do it for work five days a week rather than I have to do it on Saturdays. Um, so, yeah, no, nothing really different. Uh, Going to obviously increase my intake of meals. In off-season, I've been a steady, I've been doing, you know, steady five to six meals a day. It's going to get up to six to seven now consistently. So calories will obviously go up as I'm prepping. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Nothing, nothing, again, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. It's basics. Yeah. What so, drove you to the sport, but what do you like about it? Challenge. Like constantly changing your physique. And honestly, I was a skinny kid who got chunky mm -hmm. in, during football season and just kind of, uh, I kind of fell in love with it when I was, uh, I think I was 16 when my grandmother drove me to my first gym. And ever since then, I just kind of fell in love with, uh, obviously, you're, you're, the way you look is what drives you. Mm -hmm. And your constant improvements is what drives you because you see a change in the mirror and you get all excited about it. Um, but for me, it's just the challenge of beating my genetics. In our family, we're not the most muscular people. Um, we're not, you know, we're just average in the sense of how we're built. Um, so I'd like to beat my genetics and really take it to see how far I can push my body, obviously without hurting myself. Uh, aesthetically? Aesthetically, yeah. Health-wise, everything. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, uh, life throws you a wild card here and there, and you got to kind of bounce back from it, you know. You know, I was born with a spine, you know, spine disorder, and I've kind of fought through that. Um, kind of defied, you know, to defy what the doctors told me. You know, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't play sports, um, get a spinal fusion, this type of stuff. And, and really, I, I didn't want that. I wanted to just prove them wrong and uh, save myself the money, which is what I did. And I bettered myself by doing it. So the sport has helped me in many ways, uh, psychologically as well. You know, it, it's, it's a great boost. Uh, makes you feel good, I and mean, it's a good way to really stress. Um, so, it's a, it's a great hobby, you know. All things aside, it's a really good hobby for me. Good deal. When did you get uh, serious, like, into it, bud? Uh, probably when I was uh, 25, when I won the Mr. Kalamazoo, which, if nobody knows, that is the Mr. Olympia of uh, Michigan. Uh, I did think I did that show. 
six or seven times before I won the overall. So I was uh, very persistent in trying to win that, uh, which I finally did. And uh, that was when I think uh, things changed for me and I really focused more on it. Um, and I always did the thing, I always did these show preps on my own. I always used the guidance of uh, somebody's second eye. Um, I never used a coach, never did any of that stuff. It was more of what can I learn from other people? What can I learn from the mistakes I made in the past and apply them for the future? Um, I mean, there's no real secret to this sport. There's no uh, magic card, there's no, there's nothing. It's just basics. Mm -hmm. Lift the weights, eat to grow, sleep to grow, you know, sleep to, re to heal, you know. Um, and over the years, I've been competing since I was 19, so that would be 11 years now. It's just following basics. I, I don't really make the greatest amount of gains in the off season because it's just it's not my interest. There's a certain there's a certain lifestyle I want to have and still be competitive. And really, I don't want to destroy my look. Um, and I wasn't blessed with the best genetics anyways. So the less damage I do to my look, the better it is anyways. And if it means going slow, making steady gains throughout the off season. So what's it like? knowing you could kill the average man with your bare hands. I have small hands. I know you guys can't see in the video, but it, maybe you can see in the video. I have small hands, actually. I have small hands with tiny little bones. Uh, my, my training partners say I have ankles the size of a, a deer. Yeah. They're small. So uh, my hands are not going to kill anybody. I had I, an old lady ask me that in the store one time. What? That... What's it? She asked me in my ears, what's it like knowing you could kill the average man with your bare hands? And I thought that was a weird question and no one had ever asked me that. So I thought that was something I would ask you. <laughs> no, no, I don't think I, I think I'll break trying to kill somebody with my small hands. You don't have small hands. They're not big. You got I don't small have, wrists. Like, no, I don't have like those uh, hands that you see in the commercials where the Burger King commercial where the guy can't hold a burger because the hands are too small. Yeah. I don't have that small hands, but I have, I have uh, my mom's joints. Mm-hmm. So, but which is good though, because then it makes my muscles look a little bigger and fuller. Yeah. But it's deceiving because they're not. Yeah. So I can live with that. But Arnold once said that he thought that being a bodybuilder, I don't know, in one of his documentaries or something, that uh, it made you feel like you could do anything and enriched your life, blah, blah, blah. So you buy into that? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I, I Again, the type of person, the kind of mindset it takes to be a competitive bodybuilder and, and we know who is a competitive bodybuilder we know in our industry who does the work uh, it takes a strong mind to do that and it takes a lot of work a lot of effort you really I mean anybody who can compete in a show and look like they belong there really have patience and determination and just a drive that is unmatchable by most athletes mm -hmm. um, again it's a 24 hour seven day a week type of sport I mean Again, if you do your homework and you look like you belong on there, it looks like it, and you really did devote a lot of your time to it. Mm -hmm. And the outcomes are great. Uh, like I said, you look amazing for 24 hours. And mm -hmm. the ones who are really truly dedicated look great year round. Mm -hmm. um, you know, within reason, of course. Yeah. So. I got you. But there's no sense of like empowerment, being you know, like being a Bible or anything? Not for me. Oh, dude, you're so fucking boring. It's. Uh, I'm boring now. <laughs> well, dude, come on. I mean, I don't know. That's, I don't, I don't know. I would think that'd be cool. Like, I don't know. Don't get me wrong. I like the, I like the attention it's given every now and again. Like when you're walking down the street and people kind of look at you or somebody taps me on the shoulder and says, hey, did you see that dude looking at you or whatever? It, it's cool, I guess. It's just, um, um, I hope it's more of they see that and they aspire to do something like that or to be like, I really want to do that or whatever. Um, I guess, but I don't really think it's an empowerment thing for me. It's more of a, how can I enrich somebody else's life by the things that I've done. I got you. So you don't want people to see you and be scared? <laughs> I don't think, I, I look small in my clothes from what I remember somebody told me. That would be you, Psycho. I never said that. You did, you said I'm not that, I don't look that big clothed. But that was a compliment. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I'm just saying. I meant that he, like, he's Well, like, I don't walk around in town with my shirt off. No. Which is unusual for some bodybuilders I know would love to. They I would know. grocery shop naked if they could. They probably would. No offense to you bodybuilders out there, but you know there's a few of you out there who uh, lose again, it's kind of the different kind of bodybuilder. <laughs> again, like I said, I, I, I think that the attention is great. Don't get me wrong. It, it yeah. does. It is great, but it's not something I seek necessarily. It just comes with it. Um, um, and and that, that's fine. Um, I, I accepted open arms, but I don't really uh, need it. 
again, the sport is for myself. It's more of a psychological thing as well, uh, you know, to unwind after a day and whatnot. And also, it, you know, every now and again, before work or after work, it's great to socialize with people, people who have the same interests as you, the same goal, you know. I had a couple of clients this year that competed. I had one guy who won an overall at the Kalamazoo that I won, and he was uh, 40, oh God, don't kill me, Scott, 42 years old, 43. I mean, he won the overall, he beat kids, you know, and he uh, he felt great, and I felt great that he won. I mean, he was, he's in, again, it's just the, the commonality, the common ground that we have all these people. It is kind of fun to socialize them as well. Mm -hmm. But again, no empowerment thing, I'm sorry. Okay. Although he does titty dance in public all the time. Yes, just I do it. As soon as, uh, as soon as I can, I will do that for you on film again. So he gets attention, he just loves the attention. Love like, it. he'll be walking through in public, just chilling. And just titty bouncing. Of course, the entire time just bouncing them. Because that's what I do. So I'll I, cut that part out. Yeah, sure you won't. Sure you won't? <laughs> I don't care. So is there anyone you'd like to thank, bud? Uh, let's see, I'd like to thank uh, 101 Fitness. Uh, Jack, uh, he's a manager there. He's actually been helping me out the past few years. I, you know, he's been a great support. Um, they have my pictures up that you've taken, which I love. Favorite one, of course, is from Junior Nationals. I got third place. Um, it was a great angle. It makes me look really big. Uh, I'd like to thank my training partners, uh, Scott, Sean, Randy, Jeff. Uh, you guys know who you are if you see the video. Uh, I'd like to also thank, first and foremost, my family, who have been my biggest fans, supporters. Um, I'd also like to thank my girlfriend, Sarah. She's a competitor as well. Um, and, of course, Jeff Saigo, who's been a great support the past, uh, what is it, Four years now since we shot in North Americans during your first photo shoot. He I broke one of my fucking when lights. I broke your light. He broke my fucking lights, people. But I forgave him. Well, you got newer lights now. I did. Better. I got a much and better. And I improved you as a photographer because you got rid of those bumblebee ones. Yeah, they were horrible. Yeah. <laughs> okay, man. Well, good luck. We'll uh, hopefully get a day in the life as it gets closer. I'll come out to K Zoo at Family Fitness there and try and uh, get some filming and uh, follow you along. Hopefully, everything goes well with these 13 weeks you got left. Thank you.